This video is going to be all about droids. Basically, I just want to describe how I came up with the idea. It actually started with the X-Wing. I downloaded an X-Wing craft file from Raztech, and uh, it was a pretty basic model, but it was low part count and it had all the pieces in pretty much the right place. On top, he had placed uh, a little spherical RCS fuel tank to represent the droid. And all I did is grabbed a couple of gimblies and, and put a face on them on them to make it uh, into something that looked like an actual R2 unit. When I looked at him, he had one little eye, so I called him one beady eye, and decided to add a body and, and drive him around. So I did that, and it actually worked out great. I was cruising around, and oh uh, yeah, he fell in a pool and uh, kind of got stuck, fell over, broke a wheel. I don't know what kind of swimming technique that is but uh it it doesn't work droids are not good swimmers so uh he might as well give up anyway once i did the first droid i thought you know i've got other craft that i need to build and and other droids so i put together r2 qt and i tried to get him up on a rooftop so he could uh meet up with uh, the y-wing that he co-pilots but it just didn't work couldn't get any traction so he flipped around for a little while and took a, a rest on the railing and then decided to just roll on he was having a bad day though tripped over his own wheels so anyway but uh so that was the y-wing um it's got the droid sitting on back i i propped him up a little higher so he could see over that little uh turret mount that's on top so i've got the x-wing and the y-wing and there were other craft as well that I wanted to put together, the Nabu fighter, and uh, there's an A-wing as well. So I ended up doing a number of different droids and ended up with a small army of them. So I, I call it the droid army. Uh, the Y-wing and the X-wing, they work pretty good. I, I test flew uh, the craft and uh, I was able to, you know, get everything working and land in a parking area and have the droids come up and and do some money shots in front of the craft so i could take some pictures and whatnot and I, it was just a, a lot of fun i i work on spacecraft all the time it was a nice break a nice change to uh to work on something different these droids are fully functional you can use them in the game uh, they can be used as science rovers if you want, they've got little science experiments and all of them have uh, power and uh, a SAS unit on board to keep it stable. You can drive around the planet. It's got an antenna so you can communicate all of the science information. So they are actually usable in the game. You just got to figure out how to get them to other planets. So there's a beauty shot there. It's pretty nice. So all of the fighter craft have droids in them, but they're not full-on droids. They're just little heads popping up. Uh, the only craft that I have done so far that has a full droid is the Queen's Vessel from Episode 1. It's actually a small RCS tug that I just put some wheels on. It's only got two wheels, so it requires the, the SAS to be active in order for it to stay upright. And uh, that causes some control issues because the keys that control your direction in space also control uh, your your roving on the ground so what happens is when you go to move forward and backward uh, you actually also tilt up and down so it doesn't work very good uh, it's a cute little droid it'll work great in space but on the ground it wasn't working so good so I decided to go in and change some of the controls most of the default settings I, I like to just keep, but in this case, I've had problems with rovers before, and I, I thought that perhaps I should remap some of the keys. So I went into the, the input tab under vessel, and right down at the bottom, there's the four directional keys uh, for rovers for moving around the surface of a planet. Uh, right now, they're the same as the directional keys for the SAS. And what I did is I changed them to the translation keys. So I changed it from WASD to IJKL. And that way uh, it won't, it shouldn't interfere with anything uh, with 
an active SAS, you know, you still you still get fighting between the wheels and, and the SAS controls, but it works a lot better. And because these droids are no different than any rover on, on the surface of a moon or a planet, if you have control issues in, in low gravity, I've found that happens where I, I like to put a SAS on board, changing these controls could actually make it better. So I tried the, uh, the stairs again, uh, this time with one BDI and uh, it worked a little better. I could actually get some traction with the wheels and, and climb up, but moving a droid around, moving a rover, any kind of rover around in such a confined space is tough. Uh, so I ended up, you know, going backwards and, and sideways and even rolling around in some cases in order to, to get there. And then his wheel got caught and uh, it, was, it was a mess. And then I realized that stairwell doesn't even go to the roof. So I kind of gave up and uh, decided to go back down. Going down is a lot easier. You can just roll, you know, just, just fall down the stairs. Why not? You know, you're a droid. And he ended up falling over the side anyway. So, but driving around is, is a lot better with the SAS enabled. Uh, they're much more stable. It doesn't turn quite as easily, but uh, it, it works pretty good. So he's going to join his friends and they're all standing around. I took a shot of them standing around and it sort of looked like they were looking at something and I was like, yeah, what are they, what are they looking at? You know, what, what's so interesting? And whoa, what, there's, uh, wow, what is that? It's some kind of, looks like an alien technology. So I thought I would, uh, you know, just let the droids kind of speak for themselves. He's wondering what it is, I guess. You know, headlight. This is headlight because his head is a light, of course. And he's going in to take a closer look. And not liking what he sees. I actually uh, put lights on all the droids eventually. I thought it would be a good idea to have a portable light source. And this is the communication droid, BDBDB. And uh, I like him. He's uh, he's co-piloting the A-wing. Uh, I got the I downloaded another craft for the A-wing, and I'll be looking at that one later. Whoa! What happened there? Uh, I guess he didn't like what he saw. So he's back. Back in line. Back in line. And then you've got Unicycle, and again, this is another droid that requires the SAS active, and so he's going to say a few words and uh, kind of poke it with a stick. And he's got a little probe that sticks out the front that uh, he can test things with. I've set him up with a hot key on, on the download so you don't have to mess around. So he checked it out, and uh, I don't know, I don't think he likes what he saw. So they're all still a little confused. And this this droid is uh, IOU-1, and uh, he is co-pilot of the uh, Naboo fighter, and the, oh, the thing's now alive. Yeah, actually what that is, is it's just uh, three 1.25 meter controllers uh, along each axis, and it'll roll around. So got a low park count, um, I had to add some sass in order for it to move uh, relatively fast, but uh, it rolls around. You can put some science on that. That's uh, basically a six-part rover, seven parts with a battery, and uh, whatever other stuff. Just a, a quick, you know, playing around, different things. So that's my little droid army. There's, what, eight of them there? Seven? Seven or eight droids, and uh, each one belongs to a ship. So I can use them as, you know, props, or they can help out with a few little things. They can rove around, do science, whatever. Uh, it's just a fun little aside on my uh, my Star Wars kick. 